Hi, and welcome to an introduction to input-output ports, specifically microcontroller output ports. Input-output ports are what allow us to connect devices to the microcontroller in order to bring information in or control something on the outside. The ports are hardware, and the microcontroller talks to the ports through special function registers that are built into the chip. Don't worry if you don't know what a register is. Uh, we'll talk about that later. Okay. Every microcontroller includes several general purpose I.O. ports or input-output ports. You can connect switches, keypads, LEDs, relays, motor controllers, all kinds of other devices to these ports. Okay. We're going to learn about the, a microcontroller called the PIC microcontroller. That's a family of microcontrollers. Um, we're going to learn about that microcontroller and the one that we're learning about has five general purpose I.O. ports and they're labeled port A through port E. Each I.O. port is 8 bits wide. Okay, We'll just look at port A. All, all the other ones are exactly the same. So each port is 8 bits wide, and we say that ports are bit addressable, which means you can read or write individual port bits instead of the entire port. Okay, That's good because a switch really only needs one bit. You know, it's either on or off, 1 or 0. So um, you could actually connect 8 switches to a port, or you know, say an LED that only requires one bit, uh, a relay, things like that. So it makes the ports a lot more flexible. Or if I have a device that uses all 8 bits, I can treat the port as one whole 8-bit port. Okay, remember that a bit is a binary digit. It can represent either a logic 1 or a logic 0. And remember that when it comes down to it, this is an electronic device. Okay, so logic levels 0 and 1 correspond to voltages. So a logic 0 corresponds to 0 volts, and a logic 1 usually corresponds to about 5 volts. Okay, here we're looking at an electrical model of an output pin. Okay, it's not physically exactly what happens with an output pin, but it's close enough. It's an electrical model. So to, back, to activate an output, you write either a 0 or a 1 to the pin. And we'll talk in another video about the software that actually controls this. So electrically, let's take a look at what, what electrical effect that 1 or 0 has. Writing a 0 is the same thing as closing the switch or turning it on. So it's the same thing as uh, shorting the pin directly to ground. If you were to measure the voltage at this pin with respect to ground, what would you measure? Well, if you take a look at this, okay, with this going right here, with a direct short from here to ground, there's no difference in potential between these two points, so you should measure the same voltage that you would measure at ground, and that's zero volts. If I look at a relay as an output device, a relay is an electromechanical device. Okay, um, Microcontrollers are, are low voltage devices. Usually they operate on 5 volts DC. But quite often we use them to control high voltage systems. So for example a furnace is, runs on 120 volts AC. Okay, You don't want a microcontroller pin being connected electrically directly to a furnace. So we usually go through this thing called a relay. And a relay electrically isolates the two sides. We have the control side which is one electrical circuit and we have the load side which is different electrical circuit and they are coupled electromagnetically or magnetically coupled okay so there's no electrical connection between these two sides okay relays are usually electromechanical devices there are things called solid state relays um, but we'll just deal with the uh, electromechanical one the solid state one works kind of the same so the contacts on the load side over here of the relay basically form an on-off switch. In this position, they're off, the switch is off, and when the contacts come together and touch, then the switch is on. So over here on the control side, we have the microcontroller. On the load side, we would have the furnace. Okay, if I connect this in, this, in the circuit like this, what I see on the control side is, now remember VCC is the positive side of my battery, ground is the negative side of my battery. In digital circuits we quite often draw it like this instead of drawing the actual battery and showing the whole loop, but this is in fact a complete circuit. Current will flow from the positive side of the battery, or VCC, through this resistor, through the coil, and to ground, or the negative side of the battery. Okay, so going from when we have a, um, a complete circuit, we have current flowing through the coil. When current flows through the coil of an electromagnet, it energizes the magnet, basically turns the magnet on. So this becomes magnetic. And what that does is it draws this arm over here, and it connects the two contacts. And now we have a closed switch, or a complete circuit. So this switch is now turned on, which will turn on the load, in this case the furnace. Okay. 
Um, I don't, there's a defect here, but there should be, this should be a solid wire here, so pretend that's a solid line there. Okay, um, writing a zero to an output pin is like shorting this pin directly to ground. So just like in the previous picture right here, with the pin shorted directly to ground right there, we get current flow. Okay, over here with this shorted directly to ground and that actually connected, we will get current flow. So we have current flowing through here. So when I write a zero, it closes this circuit, completes this circuit, it energizes this coil, which turns on the electromagnet, which draws the arm over here, which connects the two contacts, which turns the furnace on. So writing a zero turns the furnace on. What happens if I write a one? Well, you know the cool thing about digital is if you do the opposite, you get the opposite result. So if writing a zero turns the furnace on, you can pretty much guess that writing a one turns the furnace off. Let's see what that is electrically though. So writing a one is basically like leaving this switch open, which means that we have a path to VCC through this pull-up resistor. Okay, if I go back to that a little bit here, okay, if, I, if you remember electrical circuits, Kirchhoff's voltage law, this is basically a series circuit. We have a resistor and a switch in series. Okay, and by measuring this voltage from here to ground, we're really measuring the voltage across the switch. So in this configuration right here with the open switch, how much current is flowing? How much current flows in an open circuit? Zero. So if there's zero current flowing, there's no current flowing through this resistor. If no current flows, how much voltage is dropped across it? Ohm's law says V is equal to I times R. Okay, if I is zero, then the voltage drop across this resistor is zero. So if there's no voltage dropped across the resistor, and Kirchhoff's voltage says Kirchhoff's voltage law says the two voltage drops have to add up to the source, if this is zero, that means this must be the entire five volts. So if I connect this, if I write a one and I measure the voltage from here to ground, I'm going to measure plus five volts. Okay. Now that means right here, I've got positive five volts. Well, VCC is positive five volts as well. So if I look at this, is this is there going to be current flowing through here? I have a path going from VCC on this side to VCC on this side. These are both plus five volts. There's no difference in potential, therefore there's no current flowing. This coil is not energized, the electromagnet is not turned on, the arm is not drawn over here, which means the contacts remain open, which means the furnace is off. Okay, uh, an even simpler output device is an LED. So if I connect an LED facing in this direction, and I connect the one side to VCC, I've got a 330 ohm resistor just for current limit, and I write a zero, then now I have a path to ground. I've completed the circuit. So current can flow from VCC through this resistor. Okay, if I didn't have that resistor here, this would be an SED, a smoke emitting diode. It'd flash really quick, puff of smoke, and it'd be burned out. Okay, so this is a current limit resistor. So we have current flowing from VCC through the resistor, through the LED, it's forward biased, and when you get current flowing through an LED, it lights up. So writing a zero would turn on this LED when it's configured this way. Okay, what happens if I write a one? Remember, it's digital. If you do the opposite, you get the opposite result. If I write a one, I'm going to get the LED turned off. Oh, well, here's the current flowing with the LED turned on. Got ahead of myself a little bit. Okay, here's writing a one. And again, I've got VCC over here, so I have positive 5 volts on this side, I have positive 5 volts on that side, there is no difference in potential, the LED is not forward biased, so it turns off. Okay, and there's your introduction to output ports and relays. In the next video, we'll take our first look at a C program, okay, that's not C like a grade of C, we're going to write A programs, okay, but we're going to talk about a programming language called C. And so we'll take our first look at a C program, and we'll talk about programming output ports. See you later.